Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how I edit my drone real estate photos for a high quality look. So recently a subscriber to this channel asked me about making a video dedicated to editing drone real estate photos specifically and I thought that was a pretty good idea so here we are. If there's ever any content that you want to see covered on this channel, please subscribe and leave a comment below and I will definitely take it into consideration. I always appreciate input from all of you, so thank you. So as I stated, we're going to be getting into drone photo editing in this video and I'm also going to show you how I implement using Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets to help expedite that process. I'm making these actions and presets that I created available for download on my website along with the sample images we're going to be editing in this video in case you want to follow along with this demonstration. That way you'll be familiar with them when it comes time to use them on your own photos. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, just real quick, here's the actions and presets for drone photos on my website where you can purchase and download them. The link is down in the description below. And also when you get the folder, you'll see that there's the Lightroom presets with installation instruction, the Photoshop actions with the install instructions, and also the three sample images that we'll be editing in this video. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom. I have three images that I took from a shoot I did a couple days ago. Now these are five brackets shot with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. These are JPEG images. You can shoot raw if you want, but I find JPEG does the job just fine. Now I have a close up shot here, a high up full height shot showing that off into the distance and then a medium height shot. These three types of shots are exemplary of a full drone shoot because there are three types of shots that you would typically take during a drone shoot, a lower shot, a medium height shot, and then a full height shot. So I didn't want to take you through the whole process of editing the whole shoot of like 12 photos or whatever I shot on this property because it'll just get redundant and boring and you'll get the idea based off of these three photos. All right, so starting with this first photo, these first five brackets here. Yes, it was Christmas time, so there's Christmas decorations on this house. Unfortunately, it's not ideal, but you know, it is what it is, it is the season. So I'm just gonna take these first five brackets and I'm just gonna control click or right click on them and I'm gonna go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. So the nice thing about drone photos too is that they're pretty straightforward and easy to edit as you'll see in a minute. So you can turn them around pretty quick and they don't take up too much of your time. All right, so now we have these five brackets loaded up as layers in Photoshop and I'm gonna highlight all these five brackets and I'm just gonna go to my Photoshop actions here as I was mentioning, my HDR drone Photoshop actions. And the first action I have here is auto align layers. So I'm just gonna hit the play button and these are gonna make sure that all these layers are in line with each other. So when we go to edit them, we don't have any misalignment or ghosting or anything like that. It'll make sure that they're all on top of each other and lined up perfectly. So now that our layers are all aligned, the first thing I do is I just choose one of the brackets that seems to be the most well exposed all around. And I use that as my starting base and I work from that. Actually, this first layer here is pretty good, but you can take a look at the other ones. It's slightly darker, that's bright obviously too bright and it's really dark. So actually I like this first layer and that's what I'm gonna to use to start. So I just look at the picture and I say, what's wrong with this picture and what do I need to adjust using the other brackets that I have? The sun was hitting this house directly on the front here and it's a white house so we got a lot of reflection coming off. So this white is overexposed. So I wanna take one of the darker brackets to uh, deal with the overexposure here on the white. This layer underneath the first layer is slightly darker and that's pretty good if you look if we zoom in here now we can see the detail now on the white it's not just totally blown out as you see in this picture you can't even see the shingles or whatever here you know we regain that detail here with this layer so and now i'm just going to go to this second action here add black layer mask and hit play so now this added a layer mask here and hit it by filling it with black so now i just need to take my brush tool by hitting B over here. And I wanna make sure that I have a very soft round brush, hardness zero is good. And I wanna make sure my flow is at 5%. Now we're gonna be painting on a black layer mask here. So we wanna make sure we have white selected as our foreground color. Now with the brush tool, I'm just gonna increase my size here. And I'm just gonna start painting over the front of this house here. As you can see, bringing the exposure of the house down a bit and bringing that detail back in, that uh, siding detail. Now by toggling this layer on and off, you can see what we did there. We brought the exposure of the house down now and we can see the detail again on the uh, siding and everything. It's looking much better. 
I might even bring some of this down back here where the sky is just a little bit. We have some grass here. When I look at this, I don't really see anything else wrong with it. So honestly, that's all the blending I'm gonna do with this is just using those two layers. A lot of the times you don't need the other layers, especially with the drone photos. I only typically end up using two or three mainly, usually. That's what I was saying. It's pretty simple and straightforward, the drone editing. So, you know, that's the nice thing about it. So I'm going to now highlight all these layers. I'm just gonna go to merge layers here. Actually, I'm gonna go to merge down and save action here. So what that's gonna do is gonna merge all the layers down and save the document and close it. And that way it'll bounce the photo back to Lightroom and we can finish tweaking it there. So. I'm gonna hit play on that. All right guys, so I saved my photo over in Photoshop and now it's popped up over here in Lightroom so we can finish tweaking it. I'm just gonna go to the develop module here and then I'm gonna go over to my presets and here are my two drone photo presets. I have one that just says drone photo HDR finishing preset and the other one finishing preset with level and I'll get to that in a minute. We're just gonna select drone photo HDR finishing preset. All right, so here it has applied the preset. You can see, you know, the difference here. Basically what it's done is just, you know, tweak some basic tweaks here with highlights, shadows, and also clarity. It's added sharpening and, you know, a few different things here. Really, that's it for this image, guys. That was a nice and easy one. Uh, very quick, as I was saying, this can be very quick. So I don't need to do anything else to this. And as far as I'm concerned, this image is good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go to my second image here and I'm gonna select these five brackets and I'm gonna, again, control click or right click on it. And I'm gonna go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now, of course, you could make this process faster by just doing an HDR merge inside Lightroom of the brackets and edit all the photos just right in Lightroom and never use Photoshop, but you're not gonna get the same level of high quality as you would doing it this way by giving the attention to detail and hand blending each one. And this really doesn't take a whole lot of time either, so it's not that much more time and it makes a big difference. All right guys, so now our second image is loaded up as layers in Photoshop here. So again, the first thing I wanna do is select all my layers and I wanna to go to my first uh, action here, auto align layers, and I'm gonna hit play. All right, so now our layers are aligned. So again, I wanna pick a layer here to start as my base to work, to work off of. Usually it's like the first or second or third layer, but um, this first layer is probably gonna be the one I use. Yeah, so I'm gonna choose this first layer to work from. So, you know, we have a little overexposure going on over here. So I wanna use a darker layer. This second layer again, that looks pretty good. Now with this layer selected here, I wanna to go to add black layer mask, I'm gonna hit play, and it's gonna add up mask and hide it. And again, with my brush tool that I have selected, white as my foreground color since we're painting on a black mask. Up here in the corner especially, I'm just gonna start painting in some of this to bring the exposure down to that area. Bring the horizon line in a little bit better in the sky. So let's see, you know, so as you can see, we brought the exposure down there a little bit. You know, if you even want to go now, say you want to bring more of the sky color in with this layer, this really dark layer, we're done blending these two. So I'm gonna select both of those. And I'm just gonna hit the merge layers action and that'll just merge those down. And now with this top layer selected with the darker sky, we can uh, add black layer mask action here again. And with our brush, we can you know just start painting in some of this here. If we want to bring the sky in a little bit better. So now we can see more of the blue in the sky. It's not so blown out. So that looks good. And now uh, we can merge these two layers down since we're done blending those two. So I'm gonna go to merge layers. So what we have left here is the uh, brighter layer. And this is a very bright layer. Very bright layer we're not gonna need, but I'm, I might mix in some of this brighter layer here. So I'm gonna go to add black layer mask again. And what I wanna try to do here is, so this is the house here right in the middle. Um, I just wanna kind of brighten up this area where the house is. Kind of helps spotlight the house a little bit, you know, even though it's just slightly. So as you can see, it's kind of just highlighting that area where the house is. Helps draw your eye to that area a little bit. All right, so we're done blending with this and I'm just gonna merge all three of these layers down. And before we save this and everything, there's one other thing I wanna show, show you here in regards to these Photoshop actions and these are really cool. 
So new in Photoshop 2021, they have a new sky replacement feature. I did another video on that. I'll link to it up on the screen right now. But I created these Photoshop actions so you can replace the sky in these drone photos with a click of a button, which is awesome. So let me show you how that's done. As you see in the actions here, I have sky replacement full clouds. So these are big fluffy white clouds. And then I have scattered clouds here, which are kind of more stringy scattered clouds. And then I have sky replacement blue sky here, which is just a clear blue sky. So say you weren't happy with your sky or say it was a little gray out. You know, this sky is okay. We could definitely use this sky, but uh, you know, maybe we can get something more interesting here. So let me show you what a couple of these look like. So this is the full cl cloud sky replacement. So if you just hit play, all right, so you might be thinking nothing happened, but what happened here is that it created a new layer, it duplicated the layer, replaced the sky, and then added a black layer mask, so it's hiding that layer, so that's why we're not seeing anything. So if I dis disable the layer mask here, you'll see that the sky that it got replaced. So why I designed the action to uh, create the mask and everything is because I will usually just blend the sky in with the original sky to make it look a little bit more natural looking. These clouds, uh, you know, it kind of doesn't really match to the day. I don't really like this too much. So let's try a different sky. I'm going to delete that layer. Since this image has like scattery clouds over here, I think the second one will be more appropriate for this one. So I'm going to select sky replacement scattered clouds here and I'm just going to play on that. So again, it created a new layer here with a black layer mask. So if I deactivate the layer mask, you can see now these scattered type clouds here. And this fits the image pretty well, uh, much better than the puffy white full clouds. So. Uh, you know, let's go with this. It's a little more interesting than the, uh, you know, original sky. Reactivate my mask here and I get my brush tool back. I'll show you how I usually blend these skies together just to give it a more uh, believable natural look to it. I'll just start painting over the sky here. And you could blend these two together until it starts looking how you want. So you have full maximum control over the blend of these two skies especially around the horizon, a lot of times it'll look unnatural. So this blending technique will help blend the new replacement sky with the original sky. So it kind of has a gradient that goes down to the horizon that makes it look a little bit more natural. Cause a lot of times you'll just get a cut off at the horizon that doesn't look natural. It'll cut right through clouds and everything. So this is a way to make it look a little bit more believable. That's our blend between the two skies. You see it's real bright along the horizon here and we still retain some of that brightness you know, by blending it here. So it has like a sort of natural and replace sky blend here that makes it a little bit more believable. So, right, so now we're happy with that. We can select these two layers here. And again, I'm gonna go to my merge down and save action. I'm gonna hit play on that. All right, so now we're back in Lightroom. Again, now we have our image popped up here in Lightroom. And now I'm gonna go back to my presets. And here's where this photo HDR finishing preset with level comes in. So what the level is doing is just straightening out your horizon. So that's why these come in handy for these drone photos. So I'm going to select that with level. You know what? It didn't do it perfectly. I'm just going to tweak it slightly. There we go. That's perfectly straight now. Usually it nails it straight. <laughs> that time it was a little off, but it's just, it's just saving you that extra step of having to go to level and then, you know, level out your horizon and whatever. It usually does it automatically perfectly. So at a click of a button, so it helps you save some of the time. So that's what these presets and actions are for is saving you time. So that's good. Now I'm just gonna take a look at this and see if there's, so that's before and after. You can see what it's doing here. And I like pretty much what the preset is doing. I might bring my blacks down just a little bit more. And I think that's about it. Now let's move on to our third and last image here. It's just the medium height shot of the back of the property. So again, I'm gonna select these five images. Again, control or right click and go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. One thing I do wanna point out real quick is that those Photoshop actions that I was just showing you are a little buggy at times. And I did have to reinstall Photoshop once to fix it. And I did some searching online. Adobe is aware of this problem and they are working on it. So if you do experience any problems, just be aware that they are working on it and it will be fixed. All right guys, so here's our third image now. We have our layers loaded up here. So I'm just gonna pick a layer to work from. See, in this case, the top layer I think is too overexposed. And I like this second layer and I'm gonna work off of that. So I'm just gonna uh, move this layer up to the top. 
and what is wrong with this layer? Uh, there's some little bit of a overexposed areas here, so I'm gonna deal with that first. I'm gonna take this darker layer here and put it up top. Oh, before I do anything again, I wanna select all these and go to auto align layers before I forget. Select that action and hit play. All right, so our layers are now aligned. Again, I just wanna select this top layer here and I wanna to go to add black layer mask and I'm just gonna play. And again, with my brush tool, I wanna make sure I have white selected again. I wanna make sure my mask is selected. And again, soft brush, flow 5%. I'm just gonna paint in some of these areas that I think are a little too, a little too hot, overexposed. Like these trees over here, for sure. Just painting in some of this darker layer underneath. A little bit on the house here, on the roof here. So now again, if you toggle this, you can see kind of how we're blending that darker layer in here. The back is obviously all in shadow. I might wanna just hit this up with a little bit brighter uh, bracket here. So I'm gonna, now we're done with this, so I'm gonna merge these two together. Merge layers, play. Take one of these brighter brackets here. Yeah, that's plenty bright. So again, I'm gonna go to add black layer mask, play. I'm just gonna paint over some of this here. It's just sort of bright in this area up here. So again, if you toggle this, you can see it'd be just brighten that up. Yeah, there's nothing wrong I really wanna do with this one either. So again, I'm going to go to the merge down and save Photoshop action with all my layers selected. I'm gonna hit play on that. All right, so here we have now our image over in Lightroom. And again, I'm just gonna to go to the drone photo HDR finishing preset. So again, toggle that on and off. You can see what that's doing. Adding sharpening, you see those details really pop out. A few tweaks here. So uh, overall, yeah, I like the way that looks. All right, so now that we're done editing, if we move all our three images to the end here, so we have all of our edited images here, then you can just select the three of them and export them. And you just choose your folder and I usually limit it to seven megabytes. And that's really all I do, just to make sure that the size isn't too big. Otherwise agents will have trouble uploading them to MLS. So you just wanna make sure that you keep this file size down. Now I'm just gonna export these and we'll have a look. All right guys, so there you guys go. That's how I edit my drone photos. What did you guys think of this process and the results? Please let me know down in the comments below. If you did find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, it really helps the channel grow and I always really appreciate your support. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, please check the link down in the description as well. Also again, you'll find the link down there to these actions and presets and these sample images if you're interested in that as well. Thanks again so much guys for watching and I'll see you again on the next one.